I'm excited. Our councilwoman is on. We're going to give her the floor. Diane, okay. open up. Say hello. Let's go. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm posting with my water. I'm getting water. Ah, bendito. Ay, bendito. <laughs> well, Eddie didn't warn me that we were going to have this, and so I could have gotten a drink. I have something behind, but I don't know. I don't drink. Oh, he uh, didn't bring you a bottle? It was Maggie's yeah. fault. No. Oh, he texted me two minutes ago that you guys were having a meeting at six, and I said it's at six. Is it gonna be seven? Hey, but you know, thank you. That Maggie, I swear, but we love her. But thank you for no, thank you for inviting me. This is a big deal for us. You know, um, this 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 former administration. I don't even want to mention names. Was like, you know, it was that person in office was devastating for our for many reasons. Um, you know, for me, the most impactful, the the one one of the first things that I think really drew my attention was, um, and hurt me to a core, was the way that our immigrant community was being treated, and how many of them just like literally went on the ground because they felt threatened and they were in fear for their lives. Um, I have never seen that happen before. Um, it was really uh, devastating to have to witness it firsthand. And I, I remember when they had people crossing the border um, last year. And again, these are things, right? Because we, we don't think about them. But as a human being, as a mother, I remember when, you know, they were trying to tighten up the border and they had all of those families coming from Venezuela and, and um, El Salvador. And they literally like ripped their kids away from them, you know, at the border and separated them in a way that so many of them just never made it back home because we don't even know who their parents are. And um, some of those kids were housed here at the Cayuga Center on 129th and Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. And I remember going there with a few of the other elected officials uh, to visit and the, the kids passing and there were babies. And that really just, it, it, it hurt me, you know, so badly because I cannot imagine somebody really trying to create some sort of policy uh, or, you know, a law. I mean, whatever you think about, you know, border protection and, and, and immigration and um, you, you just don't go there. Like that's not, you know, it, it really just was devastating to me. So I'm happy to see him go. I'm happy for a new day. Um, I think that we all feel a real sense of relief and we feel, um, you know, uh, emboldened to, to, to dream and to wish for a better tomorrow. And I think that, you know, this administration knows us. This administration really speaks our language. And I think that we're, we're already starting to see a lot of those policy changes happening. Um, just yesterday, you know, um, the president signed a, a litany of, of, of new, um, of new uh, policies uh, that the, the former administration tried to reverse. So I'm excited and I hope that you're excited. And I hope that this is something that is really going to help uplift our community in, in more ways than just you know, um, uh, just by, I don't want to just feel nice. I think I, I think that this administration is going to impact us by bringing in a lot of uh, the much needed resources. You know, our, our the city's in a, in a huge deficit. And I think that we've received a commitment from the administration to really help us out. We're going to see uh, some funding come in from the set for the Second Avenue subway. We're seeing, you know, more PPE and obviously the distribution of the vaccine, which has been, you know, quite frankly, a hot mess. So, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm here if you have any questions, but, um, you know, we made it through the last four years and we'll make it uh, through the next four. Um, but I'm just really excited to not have to fight every single day, um, you know, for things that, that, that make no sense. Yeah. I think we lost Eddie. I don't know where he goes. I'm here. So, uh, first, uh, Diane, we have um, our president, Bridget Scott, and our vice president, Beverly McFarlane. You guys can take it over for, for a second or two. Yes. Hi, Diana. I just spoke to Maggie earlier about you. How are you? We've been sitting in, literally, I've been sitting in the same spot since this morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> You've been busy. It's great to have you on. Thank you for attending. Um, let's talk about 125th and Lexington. Yes. Ooh, yes, I see progress is being made in terms of tearing down uh, the path mark. And it's not as busy as it used to be, but it's still, you know, it looks a little cleaner there. Thank you. Thank you. Because we spoke about that. Um, and the park right here on 122nd and Lexington and 
Third Avenue. Thank you. We starting to see a lot of um, people that was not desirable, you know, not really entering in our uh, neighborhood as much. We still got some ways to go, but um, it's great to see that it's a start. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We, you know, we've actually been working really aggressively on 125th Street for a long time. So mm -hmm. I think that there were like a little bit, there was a little bit of a gap. But when I used to work for Melissa, uh, Mark Viverito, you know, we were having a lot of problems on 125th Street oh, yeah. with the synthetic marijuana. And we were able mm -hmm. to pass a bunch of laws and we were able to remove like the grates that were there um, that still exist on, on 116th between 116th and 117th Street. Okay. That really helped us tremendously. Just those two things alone were really dramatic and then you know things got better for a little while and then you know they got worse again so you you know yeah. whatever happens there has to be consistent um and, but it's not easy because you have a bunch of problems there that are you know in, they're connected but don't belong to one person or one agency right um mm -hmm. and so we've been working you know really aggressively in the last few months because of covid a lot of people didn't want to go into the that were in shelter and were being transferred to hotels they didn't want to go and then you had a lot of treatment facilities that help people with substance abuse issues shut down um there was no place for anybody to go and then the the governor shut down the trains and all the people that use the homeless the the, the shelter the homeless shelter the, yeah. the subway station as a homeless shelter came up and nobody was waiting. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, you know, all of those things kind of really uh, slapped us around for a few months. But I, I think that we're stabilizing and I, I'm seeing the difference. But I also want you to know that in the midst of the pandemic and in the middle of everything that happened that could have happened that went wrong, we also have been, pre-pandemic, been going through a, a serious opioid crisis. And so right. we, mm -hmm. we, we're seeing an increase in um, specifically yeah. in uh, the sale of pills and, yes. uh, and heroin. And so now you weren't seeing it before, but you're seeing, you know, like we knew that there was something going on, but we weren't seeing the impact of it because it wasn't in your face. If, if my, in the Bronx part of my district, you could walk three blocks and see somebody injecting in front of you. That wasn't mm -hmm. happening here until now. So, you know, we're starting to see more needles we're putting it, we put in money um, to get uh, a crew that's doing syringe litter uh, pickup uh, and working, you know, we have a heat team now that addresses the serious mental illness. Um, and we have more coming that I cannot announce tonight, but that you'll be hearing about um, shortly. But we're, we're working on, you know, on, on all of these issues. I just want you to understand that our district is really different because we have every problem that everybody, you know, like that people don't even dream about, right? Yeah, we have the mm -hmm. highest opioid crisis and we have, you know, um, severe food insecurity. Um, we have the highest shootings. From July till today, we've had over 50. That doesn't happen everywhere. And so I'm trying to deal with everything as quickly and, and as efficiently as I can, but I want you to just understand that my hands are in a lot of pots all day every day you know but we're working on it we're working really hard and i appreciate you guys you know offering your support as well well thank you so much and also we need to see more police presence so the police presence is an issue because what happened is that you know we had a lot of things a lot of things happened last week you guys saw the protest you saw the protest yeah and so people were demanding for defund the nypd um i don't agree with the defund I, I understand why people would want to see that and i think that the rationale is not out of you know it's not crazy it's not a crazy concept i think that we should be we should be getting to a place where we're relying less and less on the police for things that they shouldn't be dealing with right that's mm -hmm. common sense it's how we get there i think that's the difference and so there was so much going on last year that you know the the the, the city council really we did we voted to um, reduce a billion dollars out of the uh, out of the oh, city's fine. budget, the, mm -hmm. the NYPD budget, right. and, and people didn't realize like that really affects what happens in communities like ours because now that that money went to two academies that never happened, so there were no new officers being introduced to you know to the workforce, but yet you had a whole bunch of police officers that were leaving because they either retired or mm -hmm. you know really didn't want to deal with the climate and they put in their papers early, so we don't have enough officers to cover all of the issues that we are encountering. Um, there is a new class, so we're hoping that, you know, we'll be able to get some more, but 
you know, again, that's one of those things that you have to thread very carefully and be careful what you ask for. Because if you have too much, it's bad. If you don't have enough, it's also bad. Yeah. Uh, well, I thought some of the money, uh, I don't think it was so much about defunding the police officer, but it was taking some of the responsibilities like the mental health issues and, and putting money there so that, yeah. so that some of the mental health issues can be resolved. Instead of calling the police, you call called in called somebody from mental health that could deal with the issues. And we're that working big, on that. Uh, yeah. Spreading wasn't so, so much defunding them, but putting the money and assistance with them as helping with the mental issues and some of the other issues in there that, that they need to be trained in. Yeah. No, I think, and I, I think we, we're doing that where we, you know, we have the heat teams out there now. We also have a diversion center on 116th street. So if a person that has a mental illness, specifically people on the, on the 25th precinct, uh, boundaries if they're picked up and supposed to be arrested or taken to the emergency room they're taken to the diversion center they're working with them um, and you know the heat team is really peer navigators that go out there with a mental health professional so that's great yeah. so we're looking at, at ways of really you know reducing um, the police department's involvement in certain areas we already removed them from homeless services as well so they no longer respond okay. to that so we're working yeah. on it it's, it's work in progress but I think you know we're, we're heading in the right direction Awesome. Uh, if I can ask everybody to hold for one second. So, uh, and uh, Diane, you're going to hang with us for a few minutes, right? Yeah, yeah.